Hey guys, welcome back. Today I wanted to talk about the Virginia Cavaliers and Tony Bennett's pack line defense, specifically how they guard the post. In this video, we will cover how Virginia guards against the post entry, how they trap with the other post defender, and what the three off-ball defenders' responsibilities are. The first thing I wanted to talk about is the post box, an imaginary box starting at the baseline and extending to the first lane line. The post box extends about a foot outside of the lane. Virginia's first rule when guarding the post is no two-footed catches inside the post box. Here, you can see the post defender battle for position while playing three quarters from the high side, pushing the catch well outside the post box. The second thing I wanted to call out in this clip is Virginia trapping the post with the other big defender. Notice how the trap defender sprints to trap as the ball is in the air. The player guarding the post entry passer will deny his man once he makes the entry. The lowest off-ball defender will sink to the rim, and the final off-ball defender will zone up being prepared to close out on a skip pass. As soon as the post player breaks the trap or retreats, the trap defender sprints to recover back to his man. This triggers the off-ball defenders also recovering to their assignment. North Carolina reverses the ball and we see the exact same sequence on the opposite side. The reason this post trap works is because of another golden rule within Virginia's pack line defense, and that is no post entries from the top. Only allowing post entries from the wing or lower ensures that 99% of the time, Virginia will have weak side off-ball defenders to zone up and protect the rim. Another key point for the primary post defender is the pop back. As we talked about, the primary post defender initially guards against the post entry by battling for position and playing three quarters on the high side. However, when the post entry is made and the ball is still in the air, the post defender pops back or jumps directly behind the post player so he is between the ball and the basket. Oftentimes, the post trap will lead to a cross-court skip out which is the responsibility of the off-ball zone defender. The rim defender would then have the second closeout if there is one. This is also known as Xing out. This next clip will show the importance of denying the player who makes the post entry. Here you can see the denial defender turns his head and ball watches, allowing an easy kick out to escape the trap. However, even then, at worst you have gotten the ball out of the paint and given yourself time to recover on the weak side. To wrap up this video, I wanted to cover a few of the positives and negatives of Virginia's post trap. The first positive is it's an effective way to take away inside scoring, especially from a post threat. The second positive is it can create turnovers by forcing non-ball handlers to make decisions under pressure. However, if you are playing against a skilled big man who can pass, trapping him in the post creates a numbers advantage for him to potentially pick apart, especially if they have shooters on the weak side. The second potential drawback to the post trap is offensive rebounding, especially given that defensive players could be mismatched or scrambling to recover in a kick out and shoot situation. Well guys, there you have it. I'll be doing more videos on Virginia's pack line defense, but if you're a team who runs pack line and has to face skilled big men in your league, think about implementing the post trap as a way to create chaos and get the ball out of the paint. As always, if you like the video, be sure to like it and subscribe to the channel for more basketball breakdowns.